The train is still stuck and the snow continues to fall. I should have taken an airplane. Well, I must make the best of it and join the other passengers for breakfast. The train still hasn't left. The moustache comb to tame unruly nuts. Good morning, Monsieur Michel. Good morning, sir. Please enjoy our special breakfast in our restaurant. This delay is intolerable. I am supposed to be demonstrating the Firenze in Paris in two days. Ah, your electric car. Yes, that's bad luck. Bad luck? If I miss that demonstration, I'll be in deep trouble. Just text your people in Paris and warn them. Of course I tried that. But there is no network service in these mountains. My daughter said it would be the easiest way in the world. Just sit on the train until I got to Paris. And now we may be here for days and my boat sails the day after tomorrow. How am I going to catch it now? I can't even send an email to cancel it. Oh, I'm just too mad to talk about it. My colleagues were to meet me in Paris. They will wonder what has happened to me. I can get no words to them. What will they think? We have refugees to help. Good morning, madam. The snow is a predicament, is it not? I am Russian. Snow is no stranger to me. Ah, the accent. Would it be St. Petersburg? You are very perceptive. Monsieur Poirot, is it not? And may I take it I have the honor of addressing Princess Natalia Dragomirov. We dispense with the old titles these days. My husband, all of my past was taken from me by these Stalinists. When they were gone, I became director of the St. Petersburg Museum of Antiquities to restore and preserve what I can of my country's history. Still, the delay must be vexing. If I must be late for my appointments, then they will wait. I know that I would certainly wait, madame. It has been my extreme pleasure to make your acquaintance, madame. Au revoir, Monsieur Poirot. A beautiful piano, what a luxury. Pity there's no one to play it. Mademoiselle, you are not concerned about the train stopping? What can one do? Indeed, this does not make the train move. You have great strength to remain calm at a time like this. I know one far, far stronger than I. And that is? Well, that old lady, for instance. You have probably noticed her. She just has to lift her little finger and ask for something in a polite voice, and the whole train runs. It runs also for my friend Monsieur Bouc, but that is because he is a director of the line, not because he has a masterful character. You don't have to have a strong will when you have power. But I suspect I did not need to tell you that, Mr... Poirot. Mr. Poirot. Good morning, Mr. Fauché. You have early customers, I see. Yes, I am stuck serving here as well at breakfast. Everyone is impatient. They keep complaining that the train is not moving. 
as if I could get out and push it. It's too early for me to order a boxcar. That is the appropriate drink, I believe. A gin, triple sec, lemon and grenadine mix. A drink for a train indeed. But not perhaps for my breakfast. I think I will settle for an omelette. Good luck, sir. Miss Nielsen is helping to serve in the dining car. The Orient Express bar is certainly well stocked. How long are we expected to be stranded here? It won't do much good complaining to me. That fellow there with the moustache, he may know something. Excusez-moi, sir. Yes? Monsieur Bouc asks for you to join him in compartment 203. Uh, look here, Poirot. Can you tell us anything? I can tell you the snow, it will not move aside on its own. Of course, but you obviously have some influence with Book. I am going to see him now. I will ask him if he has any information. My good friend, come in. We have need of you. What has occurred? A passenger lies dead in his bed. Stabbed. A passenger? Which passenger? In there. He's an American. A man called Ratchet. It was his valet masterman who was worried that Mr. Ratchet was not awake yet. Pierre Michel, the conductor, decided to break in and found the body. I see. Well, my friend, I think it is best not to touch anything and wait for the police to arrive. Oh, I tried to call the police, but there is no cell tower for many kilometers. We could be stuck in the snow for hours. The murderer is with us. On the train, now! The sooner we catch him, the sooner we'll be out of danger. The Dr. Constantine is already examining the body. Mon ami, this is not a missing train ticket. We must follow procedure. We must wait for the police to secure the crime scene. Please, Poirot. I will take full responsibility. Book, you ask. Well, if we cannot contact the outside world, then... Oh, you are going to drive me crazy. In truth, this problem intrigues me. I was reflecting not half an hour ago that many hours of boredom lay ahead whilst we are stuck here. And now, a problem lies ready to my hand. You accept, then? C'est entendu. You place the matter in my hands. Mr. Poirot, I am Dr. Constantine. Forgive me, Doctor, you are a medical examiner? No, but I have assisted in post-mortems at Nairobi Hospital, where I am a teaching fellow. I am familiar with your excellent institution. I do not intend to perform a full autopsy, but a preliminary examination should be of some use. Of course. May I have a look? Then we can compare notes. Please. If you need any help, I won't be far away. Mr. Poirot, I am Dr. Constantine. 
Forgive me, doctor. You are a medical examiner? No, but I have assisted in post-mortems at Nairobi Hospital, where I am a teaching fellow. I am familiar with your excellent institution. I do not intend to perform a full autopsy, but a preliminary examination should be of some use. Of course. May I have a look? Then we can compare notes. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. Where can the killer have gone? The chain lock is broken. Monsieur Michel told me that he broke the chain on the door to get into the room. I'm sure I will find some interesting things inside. I'm sure I will find some interesting things inside. This phone was deliberately smashed. Did it belong to a ratchet? I'll take photos. Last night, Monsieur Ratchet said he takes precautions. I see now what he meant. He knew he was in danger and wanted to be ready. Yet it was no use to him. I will leave it here for the police. As you see, the victim has been stabbed many times. Several alone would have been fatal. Yes, I agree. An attack most savage. I will, of course, prepare a complete report on my findings. Thank you. The watch is broken, the hands are stopped at 1.15 a.m. One would expect that to be the time when the attack occurred. A handkerchief. There's a letter H embroidered on it. this morning, the murderer would have left tracks in the snow if he had jumped out the window.
expensive clothing recently laundered. Not exactly the reading material one would expect of a man like Ratchet. A box of sleeping pills. This door communicates with compartment 204. The latch is open on this side. I wonder what could be in this photo. I'm sorry, Doctor, but I must question you. Of course. I must be considered under suspicion like everyone else. May I know your movements last night? I share compartment 101 with Mr. Book. He would not stop talking about his beloved train. I listened to him for hours talking about his Orient Express. My friend Book will no doubt confirm this. Did you know the victim? Not at all. I noticed him last night at dinner, but I did not pay much attention. Did you touch anything in here this morning? I checked for a pulse. There was none. Rigor mortis had commenced. The body was cool to the touch. I touched nothing else. What can you tell me about the victim? He died from multiple stab wounds of varying angles and depth. More than one would have been fatal. I would place the time of death roughly between midnight and 2 a.m. With more time, I hope I can be more precise. I assume the open window complicates matters. Indeed. Conditions are not perfect. Thank you for your help, Doctor. For Daisy. Hmm, interesting. My little gray cells did not let me down. I shouldn't leave until I have finished inspecting the crime scene.
Not very surprising. Ratchet had an appointment he will never keep. Ratchet had an appointment he will never keep. Ah, a meeting place on the back of a postcard. Someone with the initials A.W. leave until I have finished inspecting the crime scene. This is wrong, but I'm never far from the truth. I can't imagine Ratchet taking a sleeping pill if he feared for his life. That was easy. leave until I have finished inspecting the crime scene. So, the murderer must have exited through Madame Hubert's room. Et voilà!
I think I've seen everything I need at the moment. I am counting on you to finish your analysis. I'll have a more detailed report for you as soon as I can. So, Poirot, did you find anything out? It's a bit early for the handcuffs, my friend. Even for Hercule Poirot. Do not worry, mon ami. I believe our culprit has no plans to strike again. Monsieur Ratchet was the target. Of that I am convinced. Tell me, Book, how did you spend last night? This is a joke, I hope. Don't you trust your old friend? My friend, calm yourself. I must hear your story in order to corroborate other accounts. Ah, naturally. Let me see. Hmm. I went to my compartment after dinner. Uh, Dr. Constantine was already there. We talked about his career. He's a Cambridge man, you know. After university, he returned to his country and has done much good there. He was so interested in the Orient Express. I told him all the anecdotes I know. I'm not certain when we fell asleep, but it was very late. Here is what I have found out. Monsieur Ratchet was stabbed many times. I also found threatening letters in his safe. He had a loaded gun under his pillow, so he was on guard ready to defend himself. However, there was an empty glass with white residue at the bottom. I suspect a barbiturate. Perhaps he was forced to take it. In any case, I am certain he was unconscious, unable to defend himself. I also found several other items at the crime scene, possibly related to the murder. They must be investigated. By all means, Poirot. As fast as you can. I also found liquid for an electronic cigarette, but I could not find a vape. This might belong to the murderer. This criminal is an amateur. I need a list of the passengers with their compartment numbers. Pierre Michel will have it. I must interview the rest of the passengers and the staff. I'll be in the bar car if you need me. We are hours late. Soon, I hope, help will arrive. Bonjour, Monsieur Michel. I expect Monsieur Ratchet's death must be very unsettling for you. I have been an Orient Express wagon lead conductor for over 15 years. Nothing like this has ever happened before on one of my trains. Yes, indeed, it is a shocking occurrence. Can you provide me with a listing of the passengers and their rooms, please? Yes, certainly. Are you a smoker? Indeed. Do you smoke e-cigarettes? No. Tobacco only. Please, do me the courtesy of leaving me alone, if you will. So, Poirot, I hope you are progressing in your investigation. I have not finished yet, but it is progressing, yes. I still have many questions that must be answered. I will report to you as soon as I can.
Good morning, madam. I am Hercule Poirot. Caroline Hubbard. What can I do for you, Mr. Poirot? I am the bearer of unfortunate news. It's obvious with all the commotion that something has happened. Madame Hubbard, I am afraid your neighbor, Monsieur Ratchet, was murdered last night. <gasps> oh my god! I knew it! I knew it! I would like to ask you some questions, but first, may I inspect your room? Of course, yes, you must. I was visiting my daughter. She works at the American Embassy in Istanbul. I told her she'd never find a husband there. Since I wanted to see Paris on my way home, she told me I should take this high-class train. I can't wait to see Paris. It looks beautiful in the movies, but it couldn't be more beautiful than Schenectady in the good old US of A. <laughs> That's where I'm living now. My little gray cells did not let me down. Here is a jacket button. It bears the logo of the Orient Express. This door connects to Monsieur Ratchet's compartment. It was latched on this side. The luxury of the Orient Express is present in every detail. Madam, please tell me about last night. The murderer was right here in my compartment. I woke up. All in the dark it was. I was just so scared I couldn't scream. I pressed the call button. I pressed and pressed. I heard footsteps running in the corridor, then a knock on my door. Come in, I screamed. And I switched on the lights at the same time. And would you believe it? There wasn't a soul there. You think he went back into the other compartment? How do I know where he went? I had my eyes shut tight. The conductor came in. I told the man what had happened, and he didn't seem to believe me. I asked him to search the room, but he found nothing. I told the conductor to look at the door between the compartments, and sure enough, it wasn't bolted. Well, I soon saw to that. I told him to bolt it, then and there. How is it you didn't bolt the door between the two compartments? But I had. Well, as a matter of fact, I asked that Swedish lady, um, Olsen, uh, Greta, if it was bolted, and she said it was. How was it you could not see for yourself? I was already in bed, and my toiletry bag was hanging on the hook of the door. I couldn't see the latch from where I was. What time was it when you asked her to do this for you? Oh, it must have been around 10.30 or... 10.45 p.m.? She'd come along to see if I had an aspirin. But instead of opening my door, she opened Mr. Ratchet's door by mistake. He said something quite rude, like, Not a chance, lady, you're too old. <laughs> it shocked her. She came in. I told her where to find the aspirin, and she got it out of my toiletry bag. <sighs> Poor girl, she didn't have a good night. The same could be said for Monsieur Ratchet. It appears Mademoiselle Olsen may be the last person to see Ratchet alive. Is this your handkerchief? No, not at all. Yet it is embroidered with an initial H. Like your name. I don't care. It's not mine. And I would certainly never buy something so impractical as that frilly thing. Are you a smoker? No, definitely not. Filthy habit. 
I found a jacket button on your table. It looks like it belongs to a train employee. The button bears the logo of the Orient Express. Well, of course, the conductor came in last night, but he didn't go near that table. Still, it's a safe bet that it belongs to the conductor. I'll check his jacket later, to be sure. I have not finished inspecting your room, if you don't mind. Let's see if Mrs. Rubard was telling the truth about the latch of the connecting door. This hook is probably where Mrs. Robard hung her toiletry bag. the latch very well from here, even with the toiletry bag attached. I'll have to clear that up with Mrs. Obaud. Mrs. Obaud, you told me that the door connecting the two compartments was closed, correct? Yes, it was, as I told you. I was already in bed and my toiletry bag was hanging on the hook of the door. I couldn't see the latch from where I was. That's why I asked Miss Olsen to check if it was closed. Are you sure everything you've told me is accurate, Madame Hubbard? Of course. I have an excellent memory. Mrs. Herbert, I tested putting your toiletry bag on the door hook as you told me. From your bed, you can easily see the latch on the door. The toiletry bag does not hide the latch at all. Are you saying I'm lying? It may have been stuck somehow in a different position, or I may not have seen it in the darkness, or I didn't think to look, you irritating man. Details matter, madame. A man has been most savagely murdered. You will excuse me if I attempt to separate the truth from the false. Forget my toiletry bag and focus on who entered my compartment. Probably after killing Mr. Ratchet. Madame Hubbard is a force to be reckoned with, but I suspect I'm not done with her. Thank you for your assistance, madame. Wax to preserve the perfect symmetry of the moustache. The finest of curling irons for the moustache.
Monsieur Edward Masterman, I believe. May I ask you some questions? Mm, I can barely talk. I have a terrible toothache. We have a doctor on board the train. Perhaps... I do not need a doctor. I use essential oils. If you can find my flask of clove oil in my box, I would be grateful. Fine, if you insist. I will help you. This toothache is torture. I believe I am addressing Monsieur Hector McQueen? Guilty as charged. I beg your pardon? Oh, sorry. Just an expression. Uh, my father used to say it. You must have had an interesting childhood. I am Hercule Poirot. No need to be modest. You're a detective. You are Monsieur Ratchet's secretary? I am Mr. Ratchet's secretary. Just over a year. I mainly take care of translating certain texts for him. Mr. Ratchet only speaks English. Prepare yourself for a shock. Your employer, Monsieur Ratchet, is dead. So they got him after all. What do you mean? You are assuming he was murdered? I know he had enemies. What can you tell me about Monsieur Ratchet? He was American. He was an antique dealer. I don't know much more. Mr. Ratchet never talked about himself or his life. But I think Ratchet wasn't his real name. And he left the United States to run away from something. Or someone. Yes? He started getting letters. Threatening letters. Do you still have them? I have one. Did you know that Monsieur Ratchet had asked for my help? Asked you? No, I didn't know. He knew he was in danger. When did you last see him? Last night around 10 o'clock, I should say. Did you like your employer, Monsieur McQueen? No, I did not. He was, I'm sure, a, a cruel and dangerous man. Can you tell me your movements last night? I went back to my compartment. I read a little. In Belgrade, I went out onto the platform to smoke, but it was cold. I quickly went back in. I then went to Mr. Ratchet's compartment to take some dictation for him. I left around 10 o'clock. I saw Captain Arbuthnot. We ended up chatting in my compartment. Then we went out on the platform to quickly stretch our legs at Minkowski. He left around 2 o'clock. Thank you. I will need to check Monsieur McQueen's story with Captain Arbuthnot. I found a diary in Monsieur Ratchet's safe. Did you know about it? I kept a business appointment book, but I know he had a personal diary as well. That looks like it. Are you a smoker? Yes, I smoke cigarettes. I've tried to quit, but no luck. Can you give me this letter, please? Of course. Here it is. Was Monsieur Ratchet a smoker? No, no. He hated the smell of smoke. The train is completely trapped because of the avalanche. Hopefully, not for too long.
et voilà. Monsieur Michel, I must ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. I will do everything I can to help. First of all, tell me about yourself. Very well. My name, as you know, is Pierre Michel. I am from Calais. I've been with the company for over 15 years. Thank you. That's the right answer. I would like to reconstruct with your help the events of last night. Monsieur Ratchet retired to bed. When? Almost immediately after dinner, sir. Actually, before we left Belgrade. Did anybody go into his compartment after that? His valet, monsieur. Monsieur Masterman. And then his secretary, the young American gentleman. Monsieur McQueen. And that is the last time you saw or heard of him? No, monsieur. You forget that Monsieur Ratchet rang his bell around 12.40 a.m. Soon after we had stopped. I knocked at the door, but he called out in French. Ce n'est rien, je me suis trompé. I then left to answer another bell that had just rung. Where were you at 1.15 a.m.? I was sitting on my little seat at the end of the car, facing up the corridor. Are you sure? I left a little after 1 a.m. to speak about the snow with my colleague Jean in the bar car. I came back later. There was a call. I remember speaking to you. Indeed, I remember. Carry on. It was the American lady, Madame Hobart. She thought she saw a man in her compartment. Then around 1.50 a.m., I made the bed for Monsieur Ratchet's secretary, Monsieur McQueen. He had spent the evening talking with the English Captain Arbuthnot. At 2 a.m., I returned to my place and stayed there until dawn. What is the last station where we stopped? Vinkovsky. Could someone have come on board? Possibly. I was very busy. On into the weather, we were a few minutes late. We left at 12.10 a.m. That was easy. While Monsieur Michel was chatting with Monsieur Fauché in the bar car between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m., the murderer could have escaped Ratchet's room without being seen. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot.
murderer may have impersonated Ratchet by calling Monsieur Michel to make it seem that Ratchet was still alive at 12.37 a.m. My little grey cells did not let me down. This toothache is torture. By the smell, I think that the jojoba oil spilled on the other bottles, leaving their labels illegible. I must find another way to find which one is Masterman's toothache remedy. The weighing scale is soaked in jojoba oil. It's unusable. Ah, this old scale will do the job. To start, I must first arrange the vials from the lightest to the heaviest. Now that I know the order, I think that I can easily guess which one is the clove oil. Here is Monsieur Masterman's remedy. Here is your remedy. I hope it will help. Thank you very much, sir. Ah, oh, well. I can finally speak without too much pain. I'm ready to answer your questions. You are Monsieur Ratchet's valet? Yes, sir. That is correct. Were you told that your employer was murdered? Yes, sir. A very shocking occurrence. You are Monsieur Ratchet's valet? Yes, sir. That is correct. Were you told that your employer was murdered? Yes, sir. A very shocking occurrence. I do not think that's the right answer. No, 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 no. Not good. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. At what hour did you last see Monsieur Ratchet? It must have been around 9 p.m., sir. That or a little after. I went to bed around 10.30 p.m., same as the person who shares my room, Mr. Foscarelli. He almost immediately began snoring. What did you do then? I read, sir. 
and I spent a while soothing my toothache with clove oil and listening to the snoring. Did you hear anything during the night? Yes. My roommate's snoring. Are you a smoker? Yes, sir. I have a cigarette now and then to relax. Tell me about your employer, Monsieur Ratchet. I've been working for him for nine months. I should not wish to speak ill of the dead, but he was uh, not a gentleman, sir. Did you know that he had enemies? Yes, sir. I heard him discussing some threatening letters, sir, with Mr. McQueen. Did he mention these letters to you? He had been reading a letter when I came in. He asked me if I was the one who put it in his compartment. I told him that I had done no such thing, and he should report it to the police at the next station. How did he respond? He laughed, sir. <laughs> You're joking. I do not joke, sir. <laughs> Forgive me. I can see you do not. Was he taking sleeping pills? Always when traveling by train, sir. He said he couldn't sleep otherwise. Last night he asked me to give him two. I did so, along with a glass of water. He dissolved them in the water. Did you see him drink the water? No, sir. I left right after I gave him the pills. Was Monsieur Ratchet a smoker? No. He finds smokers disgusting. Can you tell me again why you gave sleeping pills to Monsieur Ratchet? Yes. I gave him the pills because when he takes the train, he has trouble sleeping. The letter must have worried him. He specifically asked me to prepare the sleeping pills. I didn't see him drink the water with the pills in it. I need some hard evidence to prove he's lying. Monsieur, I believe you are not telling me the truth. What? How can you say that? He received threatening letters. One, it seems, last night. Did you know he had a gun under his pillow? and even asked for my help to watch over him? I find it strange that he asked you for sleeping pills when he was afraid for his life and prepared to defend himself. I'm sure I don't know. Maybe to calm his nerves, maybe out of habit. It makes no sense. Wait, please. Isn't it possible that Mr. Ratchet asked me to prepare the pills, but didn't plan to drink them for some reason? It is possible. But I am a student of character, monsieur, and the Monsieur Ratchet you describe is not the man I met. If you'll excuse me, my toothache is getting worse again. I'm afraid this time you must prepare your own clove oil. That's the right answer. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. This appears to be a good lead.
This is the most likely answer. Direction looks promising. Very well, I choose to go this way. I think I've seen everything I need at the moment. I am counting on you to finish your analysis. I'll have a more detailed report for you as soon as I can. So, my friend, have you found our killer? Not yet, but I will tell you what I have learned. Please. Our assassin could have gotten on the train at Vinkovsky disguised as a conductor, entered Ratchet's room and killed him. Then he walked out through Madame Hubbard's connecting door, where he lost a button from his jacket. He had to wait for Monsieur Michel to be absent. He waited too long. The train had left the station. He was trapped aboard. Indeed. He had opened the window to make it look that he'd escaped that way. However, if he waited until the train stopped again due to snow, his footprints would have been found. The murderer is still among us, on the train. There's a problem with the second class toilets. What now? All morning passengers have been complaining that the door is locked. So I went to check. I knocked, but no one answered. I didn't think I should open it without speaking to you first. You did well, Monsieur Michel. Lead the way. I use my master key. But who is she? Is she alive? She is breathing. Then if she isn't dead, isn't she our murderer? That, my friend, is what we must find out. Ticket reads, Joanna Locke, traveling in compartment 105. Miss, can you hear me? Hmm? Hmm. She's breathing. Her pulse is strong. There is no sign of physical violence. This woman is sleeping very soundly. This woman is sound asleep. Given her location, I would say she has been drugged and deposited here. Well, at least it's not another murder on my train. The train is, of course, full. Monsieur, the list I gave you indicates that Hildegard Schmidt shares her compartment. I will want to talk to her later. For now, we will concentrate on this mysterious young lady. Let's return her to her more comfortable bed. Good idea. Pierre, locate this woman's room and fetch the doctor. Yes, sir. I will question her when she wakes up. Please, let me know what you learn. Mademoiselle Locke's compartment is 105. I suggest we return her to her more comfortable bed. Yes, hopefully she will awaken soon.
A cup of tea with white residue at the bottom. A briefcase and a wagon lee conductor's jacket, and a button is missing. A briefcase and a wagon lee conductor's jacket, and a button is missing. If you need a break, I can ask Jean to make you some coffee. Poirot, what if the briefcase is booby-trapped? We really need to find the combination. But of course you know what you're doing. It is booby-trapped, is it? Have you tried one, two, three, four? Have you tried zero, 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 zero? So, Poirot, any luck so far? No, that's mine. I never remember my password. Book. Silent like a mouse, please. I'm sorry. You're right. I'll be quiet now. You need to concentrate. I will not utter another word. Not one. Book. There will be another murder on the Orient Express in a moment. The stuffed animal is the same as in the photo found at the crime scene. What a coincidence! Another lock appears to have been investigating Monsieur Hatchet. Mademoiselle Locke seems very interested in our victim. Of course! She has studied her target. Possibly. She has a gun. Come, come, Poirot. Criminals are often known to carry one. Ratchet was stabbed, not shot. But then why take it on the train? 
This badge says that Joanna Locke is an American detective with the Berkshire Police Department in Massachusetts. An American police officer? Oh. Her driver's license confirms her identity. She is American. These are fake IDs. It's certain. Look, she's waking up. Thanks to you, I would not be surprised if our murder victim were also waking up. I... what? Oh, my head. What's all the yelling about? Who are you? Give me a good reason why you should not be in handcuffs. I can give you a reason, Book. Whose handcuffs will we use? I have none. Do you? Well, I... You are Joanna Locke, mademoiselle? Yeah, yes, um... Joanna Locke. I'm, um... I'm a detective. Berkshire, Massachusetts Police. I have found your credentials, mademoiselle. And I know who you are. Mr. Poirot. Then, if the introductions are complete, perhaps the explanations may begin. I... I'll try. It's simple, really. I... I'm on the trail of a murderer. I had just been promoted to detective after five years on patrol. It was my first time on a major case. It had been a month since Daisy Armstrong was kidnapped. The Armstrongs were desperate for some sign of hope. I was there only for paperwork, to fill in some blanks. The investigation is now part of a pile of investigations, and my captain sent me here just to dot some I's and cross some T's. The crime was audacious. How could the kidnapper know which was the window of Daisy's room? No, they could use a ladder to reach it, and no, they could enter the room without being seen. The misspellings are clearly on purpose, and they didn't return the child when the ransom was paid. How could the child be taken with so many people in the house? I can't imagine the pain her parents felt when they realized Daisy was gone. How are they going to feel when they realize I have no answers for them? Only more questions. That's why I'm here. A damn computer glitch. Or somebody pushed delete instead of save. Whatever happened, we lost the nanny's deposition. So my entire contribution to the investigation is to take it again. The phone record of the night of the kidnapping. The last call was for 911. A topographical map, often more important than a road map in these mountains. Good evening. Colonel Armstrong? Yes. You're the detective they phoned about. Joanna Locke. I don't remember you. I'm newly assigned to the case. It's about time more detectives were involved. My wife, 
Sonia, she... she hasn't been herself. Every day is a waking nightmare for us. Tell me you've uncovered something new. I'm here to speak to your daughter's nanny. There was a computer problem. Her earlier statement has been lost. Oh, I see. We had hoped. Well, do as you wish. I won't be far if you need me.